It is time for the Siege tier list. My uh, tier list collaborators have been working super hard to try and give you guys the best brawlers for Siege, and uh, that's what we're gonna do today. Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it is time to talk about the best brawlers for Siege. Now this is gonna be version one of the Siege tier list. However, I've got over 20 top players working very hard to try and find the best brawlers across the meta since the balance changes. So you guys can be looking forward to version 10 of the tier list coming here sometime next week. To start it off, let's go ahead and cover the F tier brawlers. Now these brawlers are the brawlers that you do not want to play in Siege. Okay, first of all, we got Poco. Uh, Poco just does not have the DPS in order to do well in Siege. Siege requires a combination of control and consistent damage and while Poco does offer a bit of control like in gem grab where you don't typically have like really tanky um, brawlers or like a, a siege turret or a robot then Poco does pretty okay but here he just he just struggles a lot up next we've got Piper who has some viability on one of the three siege maps but even though it's a long-range map she does tend to really struggle she does really well with burst damage but Siege requires consistent damage, and she does really struggle with that because of her very long reload speed. This definitely makes her one of the worst brawlers in Siege. We also have Shelly. Now, while Shelly can do quite a bit of damage to an enemy boss, she can't really get close enough to the enemy safe to deal the damage that she would like to, and she doesn't offer nearly as much control as other enemy brawlers do. Uh, and because she's only really good at defense, that just makes her F tier, because typically, you want to not have to worry about defense in Siege. You just want to go on the offense. Up next, guys, we have the C-tier brawlers. These are brawlers that are not necessarily the worst of the worst, but uh, they, I still wouldn't recommend playing them because they're not competitive. First up is Crow. Now, Crow is the type of brawler that does really well in the long-term fight, but not really so much the short-term fight. He deals almost no damage, and he's so squishy that it makes it really difficult for him to not only pick up bolts without getting taken out, but also to keep them without getting taken out, and that definitely makes him a C-tier brawler. We also have Jean, and while I will admit that it is very fun to play Jean and use your super to try and pull people into your side of the field so that the turret will actually take them out, or to pull the enemy robot boss away from the safe, uh, that's also a really fun thing to do, uh, but that, uh, that just does not happen very often when you're playing Jean, and he really just is not good without a super, so definitely deserving of the C tier. Also in the C tier, we have Mortis. Mortis is just not very good for this game mode, okay? Out of Siege, there are a lot of different things that makes a brawler good at Siege, and Mortis is good at one of them. He, has good, he is good at picking up bolts and running away and surviving with the bolts, but he is not good at gaining control of the middle so that his team can get bolts. He is not good against the enemy safe. He is not good against the enemy robot. He's also not even good at utilizing an offensive push when you have the robot. So therefore, Mortis is just not very good for this game mode. He is kind of fun to play around with though. Also in the C tier, we have Colt. Colt is good at one thing in Siege and that is consistent DPS. He does deal a lot of damage consistently, but at a medium range, there are other brawlers that are able to control the field much better than him, especially where his shots are so narrow. For example, Ricochet does slightly less damage per second, but Rico is also able to bounce around walls. He's also able to attack from a further distance away. And in a lot of ways, he just kind of outshines Colt and Colt really isn't the greatest option. Up next, we have the B tier category. These are brawlers that are good competitively. They're not the best, but they can thrive really well on the, either the right map or with the right team comp. Starting off is Terra. Now where Terra really struggles with consistent DPS, she does offer a lot of control and she can also use her super to try and get rid of enemy brawlers right before or right after they pick up the bolts. For Terra, as long as you have other people playing on your team comp that you can rely on that are top probably playing S tier brawlers that can consistently deal a ton of damage, then she's an okay option. Also in the B tier is Brock. Now out of the three maps in Siege, one of them is very long ranged and Brock is able to do somewhat decent on that, that map alone. I would not play him on any of the other Siege maps, but there he's actually pretty decent. One thing that's interesting about Brock is that he can actually hit the safe without taking damage from the Ike turret as long as he is very careful about going in and shooting off an attack and then going out so that his explosion from the rocket actually barely touches the safe. That being said, your team has to do a really good job at actually controlling the field in order for him to get in there, 
and that's not typically a major selling point. However, it can be helped to try and finish off the safe if you're just needing a few percentages. Also in the B tier, we have Leon, who is really good at having really fast burst damage that can actually threaten enemy brawlers from actually getting to the bolts. And so he's good at grabbing bolts and running away as well. But he does lack in the consistent DPS that other brawlers really thrive in. He also does rely a little bit on his teammates to try and control the center so that he can actually grab those bolts. And one thing with Leon, if you do use his super correctly, he can sneak in past the enemy brawlers and deal 19% damage from the enemy turret, even when your team does not have a robot, which means that he can be a good game finisher if you really need it. Also in the beast here, we have Daryl. Daryl is, uh, in this game mode, tanks do tend to do pretty well, but Daryl's not really a tank unless you have his star power. But even if you do have his star power, he's not as tanky as the other brawlers, and he definitely does not have as much damage as uh, the other brawlers do as well. That being said, he can use his passive super in order to rush the safe, which can help him finish it off and end the game mode for you. Up next, we have the A tier brawlers, which are great for Siege. Starting off with Bo. With Bo's recent attack buff, that means he is able to deal a lot more damage than he used to be able to, and on top of that, his mine does a great job at actually catching enemy players off guard, protecting them from getting to the bolts, taking them out once they have taken the bolts. It can also be used to stun the enemy boss, which is an excellent tactic once the boss is on your side of the field, because then your Ike turret will actually be able to shoot it down really quickly. Bo definitely thrives a lot more on the maps that are a little bit more opened up. Also in the A tier, we have Dynamite. One thing that's really great about Dynamite is his ability to kind of like, uh, pre he, he's going to know where enemy players are going to be going to because of the bolts, and so it's really easy for him to attack and deal damage to them, and his ability to kind of uh, protect the middle while being protected by the walls himself makes him a very strong brawler. We also have Spike in the A tier. Spike is just an overall really great brawler in a lot of modes. He's uh, able to deal a lot of damage from a long distance away. He's good at controlling uh, the center and controlling an area with his super. That makes a huge difference. And where tankier brawlers actually thrive really well, Spike is a really good option to try and get rid of them fairly quickly. We're also going to put Rico in the A tier. Now the one map that has been out at the time that I'm recording this was not the best map for Rico. However, he is excellent on the other two maps, which definitely justified his A tier position. He's really good range, so he can dominate on the wide open map. He can bounce his shots, which can, which can really prevent enemy players uh, from getting to those bolts or <laughs> So he can just take them out after they do. And it's also very easy for him to deal a ton of damage to the enemy safe from a distance, allowing him to quickly retreat once your bot is actually destroyed. We also have Bull in the A tier. Bull is able to assert very heavy dominance in the middle of the field once he's able to actually establish a little bit of control. It's very difficult for a lot of these brawlers that typically thrive well on Siege to actually take him out quickly. And because of that, if he's really good at dodging shots, then he is able to grab those bolts and survive for a long enough period of time in order for them to get deposited back to your turret, allowing you to spawn a massively awesome boss. El Primo is also very good on Siege because of the same reasons of Bull. He's very strong in being able to actually survive and maintain pressure. One thing that's very different about the middle of Siege when compared to Gem Grab is the fact that they the bolts actually spawn in multiple areas throughout the map. And that means that El Primo doesn't have to stay in the middle of the map where it's very wide open. He can actually go out over to the sides and use those walls to really assert his dominance. If it weren't for the one Siege map that is very wide open, there's a good chance that he might have actually been S tier. Also in the A tier, we have Frank. Now when we were first discussing Siege, we actually put Frank in the S tier and even considered him possibly one of the best brawlers in the game mode, but after testing him out on all of the siege maps, we realized that he wasn't quite as dominant as we originally thought he was. The reason why he can be super great is the fact that his stun not only deals damage to the enemy turret, but it will also completely stun the turret and prevent it from actually dealing damage to your robot. You can also use his super to stun the enemy robot as soon as it enters in your circle so that the turret will actually attack it, but the enemy players cannot enter the circle because if they do, they'll get attacked by the turret. Therefore, kind of preventing uh, them from actually being able to utilize the push that they created. He's a very solid option, very borderline S tier. It'll be interesting to see if he does actually move his way up into the S tier by the time we release version 10 of the tier list. But once again, because of the different maps, he's not quite there. But that is something we'll discuss and try and solidify for you guys later on. Okay guys, up next we have the S tier category for Siege. These are the brawlers that are so good at playing Siege that it doesn't matter what comp you're playing with and it doesn't matter which map you're playing on. Starting off, we have 
barley. Siege is all about controlling the middle uh, part of the map, the entire middle of part of the map, okay? And where he is not limited by walls and being able to like shoot around corners and stuff like that, that allows barley to have really good control in the middle of the map so that your team can then get as many bolts as possible therefore producing a robot that allows you to then go on the offensive push. On top of that, he's one of the best brawlers to go on an offensive push with because he's able to use his super and control such a large part of the field that forces enemy players to spread out and uh, get away from your robot. Barley is also a really hard counter against some of the best brawlers in the game that spawn turrets. Speaking of which, we also have Penny in the S tier for Siege. Now Penny's really strong. Her turret is absolutely incredible. One of the reasons why it's so good is because you can actually take her turret and place it behind a wall on your side of the map so that her turret is within range of your Ike. And then if enemy brawlers try to get anywhere close to it, then they'll get absolutely blasted. She has to be countered by Barley's or Dynamite's in this type of situation. On top of that, Penny's turret will actually outrange the enemy turret, which allows that her to actually deal a lot of damage to it, which does make her a very strong option. Her regular attack is really great on an offensive push with the robot because a lot of the times players will actually bunch up around that safe, and that means that they're going to deal take a lot of that splash damage and when an enemy boss is actually spawned her attack does a great job at actually taking care of enemy brawlers that are following behind her ro their robot. Nita is also an S tier brawler for Siege. Nita is incredibly strong because Siege is all about controlling that middle and one of the thing that is fantastic about Nita is she can drop down her bear and that bear will actually force enemy players to fall back after they've wasted their ammo on it. She has one of the fastest reload speeds in the game which allows her to deal a lot of damage to players and just really control the middle of the map. One thing that's really great about Nita is she has one of the fastest reload speeds in the game, and that allows her to keep on throwing out attacks even if she might miss one or two of them. She's able to control that middle in a very good way. Additionally, she has a lot of HP that allows her to survive when she picks up those bolts, and she's a pretty good counter against some of the tankier brawlers in the A tier for Siege. Up next, guys, we have Pam, also in the S tier. If the name of the game is Control, Pam is just incredibly strong, okay? She's really excellent going into the middle of the map so that she can place down her turret behind walls and add support to herself and her friendly players. She has a ton of HP, she has really high DPS. Honestly, Pam is just one of the strongest brawlers in the game overall right now, even though she did get a slight nerf. Additionally, on an offensive push, she can throw down her turret, which will eat up a few of the enemy's attacks. And when you're going on an offensive push with your robot, you want to try and eat up as many of your enemy's uh, shots as possible. So that's absolutely a fantastic addition. Not to mention the fact that her, her regular attack absolutely shreds through the enemy boss. Okay guys, up next we have the golden S tier brawler, the single best brawler for Siege. And that, guys, goes to Jesse. For the golden S tier position in Siege, we had all of the tier list collaborators actually vote on who they thought was the best. And there were a few votes for Pam, um, a few for, for Penny, even Barley, Nita, the other S tier brawlers. But it was an incredibly overwhelming majority that actually voted for Jesse. She is so strong in Siege, and there's so many different reasons why. Her turret offers amazing control in the middle of the map. For Siege, a lot of the brawlers are actually somewhat close together, so she deals a ton of splash damage because of her attack actually bouncing from brawler to brawler. On an offensive push, she just absolutely destroys, she shreds through enemy teams because she, she actually has a higher damage per second than Pam in the game if all three of her attacks actually hit. But I haven't really considered that too much for her in other game modes because it doesn't happen so frequently. But in Siege, she'll attack one brawler, and they're all like bunched up. It's just like this wide open area, so everybody has to be dodging Jesse's shots, and she can attack an enemy brawler, she can attack an enemy um, turret from like a Jesse or a Penny, she can attack the enemy safe slash turret slash Ike or whatever you call it. She's just absolutely nuts on offense. She can deal so much damage. On top of that, if you do have her star power, throwing out your her turret when you're going on an offensive push with your robot, and then attacking that turret so that it will heal itself up and continue dealing more damage to other players. It's just an, an insane way for you guys to deal a ton of damage to the enemy turret and really solidify a solid victory. And if I haven't convinced you enough that she's so incredibly strong on defense, she's also super strong, okay? Typically, a lot of the enemy players will just follow behind their robot boss and she can just attack the robot boss uh, from a distance once it crosses that line and it will then bounce off to try and hit enemy players. Then she can throw down her turret and her turret will eat up some of the, the uh, attack from the enemy robot boss. That's specifically useful in like the first wave of the robot 
robot boss, maybe even the second wave, just kind of depending on how high the level of the robot boss is. If it's like a max level, like it's not going to do very much. But if she's maxed out, she can then actually use her turret to take out the enemy uh, boss by throwing it down in front of the boss and then throwing her own attacks onto her turret, healing it up, then bouncing to the enemy boss and then bouncing off to an enemy player. Her, she's just absolutely nuts. She's so good at Siege. It's almost as if like Supercell was like, hmm, what's a game mode that builds robots and builds turrets and and who built those turrets? It's got to be Jesse, so she's got to be OP in this mode. <laughs> okay guys, you have been waiting for the uh, the Siege tier list picture and I'm going to show it to you. There it is. That's right, that is the competitive Siege tier list. And I'm really excited to give you guys the complete tier list after we've had a few more days to really uh, hash out a lot of the balance changes and figure out which brawlers truly are the best in each of the game modes. Now, before we end today's video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to all of the collaborators here that helped with making this tier list so incredibly fast. I kind of put the hardball pressure on them. I was like, hey guys, we gotta figure this out in like one day of the game mode so that we can try and have out a tier list as soon as possible for Siege. And they were absolutely fantastic and really gave incredible insight. You cannot get a tier list better than this because we literally have some of the best players in Brawl Stars helping to make this tier list for you guys. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed it. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.